In this video, I'd like to cover a few basic tensors, including the tensor outer product. So just as a reminder, uh, a basic tensor is, is an operator on vectors that's linear. So if I, when what that simply means is that if I apply a tensor to a linear combination of vectors, then the result is the linear combination applied to the vectors individually. Okay, and so this has to hold for all scalars, alpha and beta, and all vectors, v and w. So this is, this is the basic property of a tensor. And the simplest one is the zero tensor, so you apply it to a vector, any vector, and you get back the zero vector. And we can easily check that this is linear uh, by simply applying the zero tensor to a linear combination of vectors. If I do that, I'm going to get the zero vector. Well, the zero vector is the zero vector plus the zero vector. And I can rewrite each one of those as alpha times the zero tensor applied to the vector v and beta times the zero tensor applied to the vector w. So that's going to check out to give me linearity for the zero tensor. So I verified that this relationship here, in fact, defines a tensor. I can also look at the identity tensor. The identity tensor, again, is the tensor applied to a vector. It gives you back the same vector. And we can check for linearity on this one, too, by, again, applying the tensor onto a linear combination of vectors. If I do that, I'm going to get back that linear combination. And I can then go ahead and rewrite each one of these vectors, v and w, here as the identity times it, or acting on it. And so I get out as I want a linear combination of the tensor applied to the individual vector. So again, that checks out to be linear. Uh, a third tensor uh, is the tensor outer product. And it's a tensor that's constructed out of using two vectors. So if I have two vectors, a and b, then the tensor outer product is written a tensor outer product b. So this little symbol here, the circle with the cross, is called the tensor outer product symbol. And so this whole object here is a second order tensor, and it's defined through its properties. And its basic property is that if I apply to a vector v, the result is going to be the second vector dotted with the vector that I'm applying it to times the first vector. So I get b dot v multiplied into a. So it's a vector that's parallel to a. So the result is a vector parallel to a, but whose length is b dot v, which is may seem like kind of an odd thing to want, but it actually turns out to be a useful uh, device. And, and we can check that this definition indeed results in a linear operator on vectors by simply doing the, what we did before, which is to apply A outer product B onto a linear combination of vectors. So if I apply it, I'll get B dotted with that linear combination times A. And now I can start to rearrange terms here, and I can sort of distribute this dot product across this sum, and I'll get alpha b dot v times a plus beta b dot w times 8. And now if I look at each one of these individual terms here, I'll see that they match my definition of the application of the tensor outer product. And so I can rewrite that. First term is alpha a outer product b acting on v, and then the second term is beta a outer product b acting on w. So this gives me linearity of this definition here. So so that also works as a tensor, this operation of tensor outer product. Okay, And let's go ahead and just look at uh, some examples here. So suppose I have a, a vector u, which is 1 half e1 plus 2e2 plus 2e3. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the action of the tensor outer product of e1, tensor outer product e2, acting on u. So e1 and e2 are vectors. I can create a tensor out of them using the tensor outer product, and I can apply it to u. And so let's go ahead and use our definition to see what that's equal to first. So it's going to be e2 dotted with u. So you take the second vector here, dot it into what you are feeding in, and then you multiply it by the first vector, e1. And so an e2 dot u by our component extraction rule is just simply u2. So u2 e1 is the result of applying this tensor outer product to the vector u. Uh, so, and that first bit there, the e2 dot u, is just simply extracting out the component of u in the in the two direction. So, in which in this case here is just simply the number two, and then multiplying it by e1. So that's going to produce as the result a vector pointing in the one direction 
whose length is two. So the length comes from the second component of u, and the direction is the first vector in my tensor outer product, which in this case happens to be the one direction. So, so that's just an example of uh, using the tensor outer product. Uh, the other example uh, that's useful is the projection example. So suppose I have a vector u and I have a plane whose normal is n, with, where the norm of n uh, is equal to 1. And suppose I want to know what the projection of u is into this plane, so I'd like to know what this little green vector here is. Well, to do that, what I can do is I can take u and I can subtract off the component of u in the n direction. So the component of u in the n direction is this guy right here. And so if I subtract off this vector right here from u, I'm going to get the green vector here. So that's just simply u minus u dot n, which is the projection, times n there. And so this is the projection of u into the plane. And I can actually rewrite this to see that actually this projection operation is defined by a tensor. In fact, just simply looking, so let's go ahead and the very first term, which is u, I'm going to write as the identity acting on u. And the second term, if we look back to our definition of the tensor outer product, can be written as n outer product n acting on u. So I can kind of group up the terms, pull the u out of everything, and I can have identity minus n outer product n acting on u. And so what's in the square brackets here is my projection, and that's, that's a tensor. So that's just another example of a second order tensor.